Today we'll make important video about my darkroom. So I make an update to all of my wet chemical processing. So I bought the Yobo CPE processor. This is kind of an old stock and in the same time kind of a brand new. So I will describe it, how it feels, what it actually looks like in real life and not in the pictures. And I think it's really important because in the modern world it's a lot of new solutions, but this is kind of an old solution, but it still works amazingly fine. So I will just describe how it feels looks and works and uh, in 2022 I think it's a really important video to have on the uh, internet and on YouTube so welcome to this video So as you can see here, I bought the Yobo CPE 2 Plus. And as far as I understand from the description, this is exactly the same tool as CPE 3. So in a kit, I have a manual, I have description of electrical circuits, and also have a little bit of manual and some small parts like this roller hander for measurement cylinders, rolls and the bottles. Unfortunately, I don't found the proper CPU processor with the lift in a good condition, so I'll still use the bottles to pour chemicals inside my Yoba drum directly without any lift. So this is how it works. You have a magnet on one side and you can put your drum in a different positions. And usually you pour required amount of chemicals from the cylinders and they actually have a, this amazing lock system so they not float in water. And because it's a magnet and it can be half a liter of solution inside your drum, you have these wheels to support the drum and not ruin the motor shaft. So as you can understand, I don't have a magnet on my drums. So in this why I actually bought a lot of additional tools from Yobo. So I have the additional set of bottles for my C41 chemistry. And additionally, because I want to develop more film at the same time, I bought the reels for the drums and at the moment I can develop much higher volume of C41 film and the black and white film. So I have a Patterson system and at the moment I actually have a full Yobo system to process. And I bought the tank with the system 1500 just because it was cheaper to buy the whole tank with a stem and with additional reel and with a cap and in the kit I have a magnet for the drum and additional reels. And most importantly, because I have a universal tank with a 1500 series, I bought the stem for expansion for the reels. So that's it for unpacking and let's check what I actually have from Yoba at the moment. So the first thing what I have, it's actually bottles and I have a 1500 drum. I have four additional reels and the magnet four measurement cylinders and the four bottles in a kit. So let's look on a Yoba 1500 drum. First thing what I can say is the packaging and the cardboard and in general the plastic on the drum is just amazing quality and probably it will last forever. So in comparison to Patterson the whole system looks and feels like 10 times better. So let's start with a review of 1500 series drums. So I bought the drum, which is not for one film, but two 35mm film or for one 120 film. And if you saw in my previous videos, I also have this type of drum. I use it mostly for paper, but as you can understand, this is a universal extension and I can put the core and stem inside and use it for development any type of film. In the kit for the drum, you have a good manual, how to load the film on top, how to rotate it and how we generally use this system. I really like the quality and packaging and the quality of each material, so basically the wrapping, the paper, the cardboard, the plastic, the lid and so on. And this Yoba drum have one core and one reel inside, 
So for loading of a 35 millimeter film, you can use it as it is. If you want to load the 120 film, you just need to extend it and lock it up with the middle position. And from there, you can load 120 film. So it's more or less the same for the old drums like Yobo drum or for Patterson drum, but you also have here additional stem with the locking. So you can put additional spare reel and load two 35 millimeter films. What is curious for me at the moment, it says you can load on one reel two 120 films. I'm actually not sure, but I think you can just wind it both of them on one reel. So I just need to check in future if it's possible or not. So in this lid, actually also modular, so you can remove the funnel. And in my case, I have a funnel and I have a cap for development of paper. So all of the parts actually still produced and they replaceable and you can use them both for different types of development of paper, film, black and white film, sheets and so on. And because I'm using CPE2 Plus with the magnet, I just need to install the magnet on the back side of my core drum, so basically the main drum. And I can use it inside my development kit. As you can understand, this magnet is not an IDMU magnet, so it's ferric magnet and it's a classic one, and it's relatively heavy. And the system for holding this one on the back side is quite simple. So you have a few plastic notches and you just need to press it down. If you need to use it on a different drum, you can also easily remove this magnet from the back side and put it on a different drum. And this is how assembly looks like, so you can use it as it is. In the manual it says you need to put this roller wheels on a two thirds of the drum to support it weight from the shaft of the motor. And you can plug and unplug the drum on a running motor without any problems. And this is how the short drum looks like and this is how it will be rotated. So let's start with the first tries on the system. The first problem what I have, it's actually a bit too long, so I cannot set it up in the same space what I used for my C41 development. And the second thing, it's actually save a little bit of volume for the drum and it doesn't really have like full structure on the backside. So I need to find the solution in future videos how to set up this more easily and store off my chemicals. So I anyway have a plans to create two different systems for wet one and for dry one. As I said before, these cylinders actually have a notch and few of them have a marks for 100 and 200 milliliters for some reason. And I'm actually not sure why it's marked like this. But in general, all of these wet chemical systems set up on top of the heating with the thermocouple. So it's basically a thermal regulator locked on top of the small heater with, the, I think, 300 watts of heating. And you need to understand from the beginning, this is a thermostat, it's not a heater. So idea behind it, you just need to fill it up from the beginning with the warm water and you need a, around six to seven liters to put inside. And in my case, as you can understand, it was also not really easy to lift it up from the sink. So in future, I also will find a better solution how to do it. And now let's hear moment of truth. So the system passed first initial test, so the motor works, heater works. So let's try to do something useful from this setup. The first thing what I want to do, I just want to use these small cute bottles for all of my chemicals because it's first of all 500 milliliters and this is a volume what I actually really like to work with. It's not too small to basically dilute your chemicals and it's not so big because I anyway don't need for rotation of any type of processes 500 milliliters. I will make a new stop for my array for chemistry because it already looks a little bit ugly. And I will also dilute it for 400 milliliters because it's much easier to prepare these type of solutions in the bottles and it's actually marking on the bottle is quite precise. I think for stop solutions and things like this you can use even just marks on the bottles. So let's transfer Blix fix and put everything in the thermostat. From the beginning I start to using this white marker and I really like the looks but unfortunately it's not water stable so in future I also need to find different 
approach for marking my bottles. Let's talk about the drums. Because I'm working with the 1500 series, I have uh, this new drum with a magnet and I have an old drum for my paper. And the kit itself have a little bit different number. But what you need to understand, the 1500 series, it's exactly the same series, so it's interchangeable and you can use each part with uh, another part from the different kit. So my top portion with the cup inside, what I use for paper, so I will disassemble the drum what I will use for film development and I will just use the base with the notation for film. And if I need to develop film, I will just exchange this lead with the funnel and process my film on these reels. And if you don't have a cap inside this lead, so you can use the full length and the full potential of the stacking. But the base itself, it's exactly the same, just one have a label glued on top and the second one is just the empty cup. So for this application of paper development, I will just stack it and plug it and test how it rotate. And if you bought anything for the first time, it's much better to, you know, better test it, drive it without solutions, unplug it and plug it back and find all of the problems what it actually can occur while it's heating up. And on the first test, I actually found a few problems and the first problem was a magnet. It's actually falling off from the drum. And the second problem, I run out of water, so it doesn't really have any mark for proper water level inside this tool. So idea behind it, you need to fill it up up to required as written in manual level. So in my case, I just put it that the water from the thermostat is actually rolling up to the drum. And I was actually quite surprised with the precision of uh, temperature control on this tool. Yes, I know this is not PED regulator or something like this, and I probably in future will upgrade it, but for now I'm actually really happy with the temperature stability of the whole system. And for the test, I want to load the 120 film from the Copenhagen, which I actually took on my first trip in this city. It should be quite easy, so at that time I actually not developed the film myself, so it was developed in a lab. And let's see what will be corrections and what will be color shift from the development what I make and from the development in the lab. As a first step, I need to change the cropping of the picture, because I want to print it with the borders and find the right focus for the new magnification. This picture should be really sharp, so it was shot probably around f8 and the midday, and it has a lot of details and it's actually backlight shot. For color analyzer, I will actually crop the borders for now and diffuse the light to make better measurements of the overall color on this picture. I need to stop down the lens and find the middle position of this diffuse picture to find the proper exposure. And after I place the sensor, I will move it back and forward to find the optimal position and find the exposure on my color calibrator. And as a next step, I just need to dial in all the parameters, so magenta and yellow channel with the two different channel knobs. And when my photo hat is actually set it up for proper settings, I just need to transfer my time to the Kaiser timer. And we're ready to make the first test print. From this Yobo system, I actually want a more flexibility, stability, and at the same time, save a little bit of space. Because as you can understand, if you have a multiple processes, multiple drums, multiple systems, multiple baskets, it's actually create a lot of mess. And secondly, I really like this approach. It's crazy simple system, but it's exactly the same steps what you use with the hand rotations. But in the same time, this kind of an old and primitive system have a lot of quality. The plastics and the knobs and all of the clicks and so on looks really quality made. So I really like the drum system and the flexibility what you can use this drum for. Maybe rotation motor is a little bit noisy. But overall system is actually much quieter if you compare it to the systems with the circulators. What I'm not decided at the moment, how to actually proceed with the bottles, how to open them, when to put on, 
But as always, the first tries is not really, you know, sharp and easy to make. So in future, probably it will be much easier because I will have a hand on this tool and the process itself, and it will be more or less automatic in my mind and with my hands. And as you can understand, you still can buy a new made lift for this type of system and a lot of replacement parts. And also what I really like, so if something breaks inside the system, I also can remake the whole system itself. So the motor, the temperature control, the heater, basically everything. And as you can understand, to modify something to the crazy extent, it's much easier than to create anything from the ground and from the scratch. And in this case, I'm taking more engineering approach. I'm buying what is actually state of the art film development technology and at the moment I just thinking how to make one step more and improve it and bring up optimization in the portions which is actually requires optimization. And this is my first test sprint and as you can see it looks really good. I am really happy with the results. I don't see any problems with the color, with the rendition of the marks and even first test sprint looks for me really balanced. So my temperature control is really fine and my blacks on the picture are also really fine. So it means we can proceed with the development of the bigger print. So, but for now, let's put all the settings inside my lab book. And because it's almost end of my lab book, probably in future videos, I will make a print reveal and some print review, which I will keep and which one I will put in a storage. I'm not sure if it's quite interesting video, so if you want to see it, just put the comment below. I will make it additionally and make it more fun. For this particular print, I actually have a settings which is 30-30-0, which is not really common for me, so I usually work with a 60-60-0. And it's quite interesting why it's so different. Maybe it's a different film batch or maybe it's a different chemistry. But anyway, I will make the bigger print with exactly the same settings. And I already like the system itself, so it's quiet and the temperature is stable and actually it works quite well. Probably in future I need to buy any type of stand for this system and probably I need to buy the better thermometer for precise temperature control for C41. And only one big advantage of the system, what I can imagine at the moment, it's having PED temperature control inside the bottle itself. So have a prop for temperature inside the bottle or the switch which can change the two thermocouples from the drum or from the bottom of the bath. But so far I really like the result and this print for me looks really good, really balanced and I have zero problems with the handling of the tool and it was easy seamless transition for the new system and so far i really like the results and as always you can find all of my prints on my web shop you can support my channel with a subscription thank you for watching and see you in the next videos